Hey, what's going on everyone? This is our reviews back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 16.1. This is a great, great update. It brings some really interesting new features and it has some changes that I really like. So in this video, we're going to talk everything about this update, why I believe this is a great update and why it leads us to even better updates in the future. All right, before I get into this video, I just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are currently not subscribed to the channel. So if you're enjoying the videos and you want to see more iOS 16 videos, please make sure you subscribe. It really helps out a lot. Now let's get started with iOS 16.1. Now what I like about this update is that it brings all the features Apple talked about at WWDC 2022 that haven't been released with the initial release of iOS 16. That of course leads us to iOS 16.2, which will bring new features that we don't know about. And of course that should be really exciting. So first of all, let's head on and talk about some really interesting new features that have recently been released with the latest beta of iOS 16.1. One of them for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. If you have something running on the dynamic island, now it will be outlined right there when you're on the dark mode or you're using a dark wallpaper. So you can see that outline right there. And even if I expand it, it will have the outline, which is really interesting. Some people like it, some don't, but it will only show on the dynamic island when it is active, of course, when you have something running, because if you don't have anything on the dynamic island, it won't show at all. And here's something new for the lock screen. I really like this change. You can now hide the clock even more. So you can see right there, it actually hides the clock even more and it will even hide the inline right there, the inline widget. This is really interesting. You couldn't do this with iOS 16. It only does this on iOS 16.1. So let me just go to the customization screen here. So if we go to customize this, you will notice that we can actually play around with this. You can see you can hide a lot more now until there can see now it will just pop up if you just actually do way more but with this you can see you can hide way more with iOS 16 the initial release you could probably do only about half of the clock maybe even less with this you can do even more and it's actually really really cool there is also a new pop-up to confirm to download on the app store so when you try to download something you get this pop-up and of course the double click here to install this has been totally changed it's way smaller and in my opinion looks way better than the old one Another change with Siri on iOS 16.1, if you get a message that's not in English, Siri won't speak it to you before asking you. So it will ask you, it knows that it's not on English, and of course it will ask you whether you want you to read that message or not. If you go under the App Store section on the Settings app, now you will get in-app content and it's enabled by default. What this will do is that once you install an application on your device, it will start downloading content for that app in the background, even without you opening the app at all. So once you open the app, it's already done. It has downloaded the content the app needs. So if you just, of course, don't want to do that when you install the app and then open the app, that can be done automatically. Just make sure you leave this enabled. Once the app is downloaded, it will start downloading the content in the background. Of course, iOS 16.1 will bring also other big features. Like we talked about live activities that has been presented by Apple at WWDC 2022. That is coming with iOS 16.1. It's really cool to get live activities from apps that support it on your lock screen and also the emergency SOS via satellite the feature for the iPhone 14 series that Apple showed on the iPhone event that is coming with iOS 16.1 as well. Currently on beta 4 on the code, there is basically something that is like a test, like a demo that you can try it out to see how it works. It's not live yet, but it shows on the code and that will most likely be right here on the settings app under emergency and SOS. Here you should have a section, of course, once the software is out, a section where you can actually demo the emergency SOS via satellite. There are other things coming like the automatic verification, which is really cool, a feature that will allow you to bypass captures and like those captures that ask you to like select different photos or enter different words and letters. 
that will be bypassed automatically by iOS 16.1. That's also another big feature Apple talked about. And the, there's also a new view for the wallpapers on iOS 16.1, which makes it really easy for you to change between your different lock screens directly from your settings app. So you go to settings, wallpaper, and there you have it. You can just swipe like this to go between different screens and of course choose to set as current any one of these or you can add a new wallpaper with that option. And now let's talk about performance. We have here Geekbench and we have a test on iOS 16.1. So if we go to history right here, there is the CPU test. And I only did this test on iOS 16.1, but we have the older scores from iOS 16 and they were quite similar on the single core score. So right here we have 1889, while we had 1879 on the single core score with iOS 16 and iOS 16.1, you can see a slight increase there. But where is a big change? The big change comes here on the multi-core score. Now we have here 5,365, while we had 4,664 on the multi-core score with iOS 16, 16.1, almost like 700 points increase here really really great apple is doing of course a really great job with improving ios 16.1 and of course ios 16 overall now i did have quite a good experience with ios 16 ios 16.1 as well it has of course a few bugs sometimes when i install a new app when i try to actually access my photos from that app it will require quite a long time to show the pop-up to allow access and of course it has a few bugs but otherwise performance seems pretty good moving on to battery now of course this is a newer device and it's a bigger device it has a bigger battery and of course a 100 battery health there so you can expect it to have a good battery life but let's take a look here what we got with ios 16.1 so the last three days right here we have about 60 to 65 percentage of battery seven hours and 56 minutes on screen like right here we have about like 80 percent of battery nine hours 35 minutes not that bad of course we have to keep in mind that this is on beta still it's beta 4 and we can expect a few more betas before the final release and right here we have about 70 75 battery percentage right there we have here nine hours and 16 minutes on screen so in my opinion is decent not probably the best battery life we ever got on the iphone but hopefully it will get better with the next few updates and now let's talk about release date now right here you can see this is the latest beta it's beta 4 and it currently ends with a c the build number ends with a c which means that we will probably get another two betas or we might just skip to the A directly, but we probably will get another two betas and then the RC version and then the final release of iOS 16.1. Now we were hoping that we will see an Apple event this month, but it looks like there won't be event, even though there will be some new devices that will be released, some iPads and other devices, but it looks like there won't be an Apple event. So what I would expect Apple to do this month, they will most likely release this update. So right here next week, we can see another beta, then another beta here, and then somewhere here, we will see the RC version, which is the final version that gets released to the devs before releasing the public version of iOS 16.1. And what I would expect Apple to do is they will most likely release iOS 16.1 right here towards the end of October. It might be October 31st or November 1st, but I believe this will be one of the dates that Apple release iOS 16.1 to the public. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and all the information you got on this video. If you want to see more iOS 16 videos, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to leave a like on this one as it helps out a lot. I'll see you on the next video.